What is going on everybody? So today is the technically the second video in like a two-part series about the whole no shark attack, the shark attack being removed from basic training. And in this video, I'm gonna be focusing more so on what is actually supposed to replace the shark attack and whether or not, in my opinion, that this is gonna be like a change that lasts and whether or not it's just gonna be reinstated. So we're gonna have the shark attack again. The first thing I want to talk about is whether or not this is going to be like a change that is here to stay and it's not going away. So as in like the shark attack is staying away and the first hundred yard thing that is replacing the shark attack is here to stay. Okay. So my personal opinion on this is I hope, I, I hope I'm praying that the shark attack gets reinstated in a sense in that this first hundred yard thing is, goes out the window as in like yeah you probably should have never tried this because at basic training or really in all the different training schools in the military they're always trying new things they're always trying to see what works see what doesn't work see what creates better soldiers see what doesn't create good soldiers you know they try the stress cards they try giving people patches at basic training which you know I don't understand why they did that. But, you know, they try a whole bunch of different things. Sometimes they keep it, sometimes they don't keep it. And because of the current situation and events in the world right now, you know, they're like, hey, we probably shouldn't have the shark attack because you're just right up in people's faces. So there's a whole bunch of craziness going on and we could spread this disease and do all that stuff. And so somewhere along the line, somebody got this bright idea that we should actually keep this change for forever which is just removing the shark attack and replacing with something else that's a little bit less stressful that's a little bit uh, nicer that's a little bit more welcoming to people which is stupid watch part one if you want to understand just all my reasonings essentially well not even all of them on why i think it is, it is a really stupid idea to remove this uh, but essentially like i said the army tries a whole bunch of different things and one of the problems this is a key problem that the army has had recently is soldiers coming out of basic training and AIT are not as disciplined as soldiers in the past who came out of basic training and AIT. And one of the things that they did to combat this essentially is, you know, reinstating drill sergeants at AIT. So now you have drill sergeants at basic training and you have drill sergeants at AIT in order to make sure that the soldiers are more disciplined whenever they actually get to their units. So how do you make a disciplined soldier? Is it just, you know, having a drill sergeant? Because essentially you had platoon sergeants and then they just sent them to drill sergeant school and they came back and now they're drill sergeants. Okay, so obviously they're gonna have learned a whole bunch of different things, but by doing that, you're kind of changing the atmosphere a little bit in order to, you know, supposedly make soldiers more disciplined. And the shark attack, in my personal opinion, is something that very quickly makes civilians more disciplined. So you go to basic training, you get to reception, you know, it's just really crazy. People aren't very disciplined. They're doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff because the drill sergeants can't really punish you at reception. Like they maybe can make you do like five push-ups or something like that. Like they're not gonna make you do that much if they make you do anything at all. When you get to basic training, there is a whole lot of punishment that the drill sergeants can do. It's still technically limited, but there's a whole lot of things. And the thing that I talked about in the first video is how the shark attack is like a mental shift that people go under uh, in order to kind of take on the environment, the physical change, the mental change of becoming a soldier. And kind of in a sense, what the shark attack does is you get off the bus you, you you know the drill sergeant says get off this bus in the next five seconds or else everybody's just gonna have to do whatever stuff or you know they make you do all these very specific tasks there's a part of the shark attack in which if you screw up in the slightest like in the slightest you're gonna get smoked you're gonna get yelled at there's gonna be bad things that are gonna be happening to you so you have to pay attention to detail you have to pay attention to exactly what the drill sergeants are wanting you to do. If they tell you to do a specific thing, you better make sure you're doing that very, very specific thing and don't deviate whatsoever. Don't think like, oh, you know, drill sergeant says to do this, but I think it would be better to do this. Then if you do that, you're, you're screwed. You're gonna have a very, 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 very bad day, especially if you're talking about the shark attack day, the day one of basic training. So it's essentially training soldiers to be more disciplined to pay attention to detail, to listen to their drill sergeants, 
to listen to their superiors and still in kind of that leadership role of NCOs into trainees at basic training. And if you remove that, then you're kind of removing a piece up to the puzzle that makes soldiers disciplined. So then they're gonna go to AIT and they're theoretically gonna be less disciplined than previously whenever the shock attack was there. And I'm not saying that this is gonna be a crazy drastic change or anything like that as far as the discipline level, but you know, it could be there. Uh, when you don't have that mental shift in becoming a soldier, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to discipline in my opinion. So I kind of went on and on on that, but you kind of see where I'm going with this. Removing the shark attack essentially is going to create theoretically less disciplined soldiers, which is a problem that we've had in the army, not just in my opinion, it's literally why they reinstated drill sergeants at AIT is because of the lack of discipline of soldiers coming out of initial training. So maybe possibly, hopefully, they're gonna reinstate this. I really, really, really hope that they don't remove it across the board. Cause right now, technically, like I don't think they're doing shark attacks anywhere just because of the current situation. But specifically at infantry, one station unit training, it has been removed and it is essentially, you know, it's kind of like, they're, like I said, they're testing it. They're testing it there. Hopefully it doesn't work out. Hopefully they realize, holy crap, at AIT, Man, we're getting some really undisciplined soldiers here. Like this is this is not good. And then by the time they get out of AIT and they get to the actual unit, the units themselves are like, holy crap, these soldiers are like really undisciplined. And since that's like a bad thing and a good thing at the same time, so hopefully if it's bad, then they reinstate the shark attack. And then, you know we have that awesome, terrible memory of the first day of basic training. You have more disciplined soldiers, and you know all all is good. Now, what is replacing the shark attack temporarily, hopefully, at basic training is called the first 100 yards. And then supposedly this is supposed to help you be more motivated to complete your last 100 yards at basic training. Don't get too worried about the whole 100 yards things. It's just you know you know hopefully at the beginning of basic training this motivates you to finish basic training. I'm not sure how much it's going to do of that. Um, personally, in my opinion, if the shark attack was something that made you want to quit basic training, then I think you should probably just quit basic training. And, and it happened. Like, again, my personal experience going to basic training, literally day one shark attack, we had several people who wanted to quit. Not, not like a whole bunch of people, but a couple of people who wanted to quit basic training literally after the first day. And in my personal opinion, if that's how you feel, if you're that easily scared away, then I would say most people probably don't want you beside them whenever you are hitting some critical times. So I'm gonna go ahead and just read off what the first 100 yards is, okay? So the first 100 yards puts the new arrivals through a series of activities that include introducing them to the infantry's history and its spirit of the bayonet, offensive ethos, as well as a series of mentally and physically demanding activities. The activities include among others, uh, a mock battlefield resupply mission, physical fitness tasks, and a demonstration of the weapons, equipment, and methods infantry soldiers use in combat. So it's essentially, you're going to take some supplies to another area, um, you're gonna be moving some equipment, There, you're gonna do different parts of the ACFT, which is the leg tuck, the push-ups, and I think it is the standing power throw. Okay, so just three pretty simple events. And also, the trainees are going to be given some facts to memorize for a quiz on those facts later on. So, it's just very, very simple physical, you know, exercise, fatigue, whatever they're trying to make you make happen. And then also just the, a quiz, essentially, on some things that they tell you. Now, this would be probably a little bit better if it was like later on in base training because honestly, first day of base training, holy crap, this is gonna be hectic. It, and again, it's not like the shark attack. Like the whole shark attack thing is it's supposed to be hectic. They're supposed to be in your face, creating chaos, uh, making you confused, making you sh just stressed out so that you can't complete the simplest task to just, I don't know, pick something up out of your, uh, out of your bag. Like say, hey, grab this out of your bag. Everybody do it in the next five seconds. And you're just freaking out and you can't, you just can't remember where you put something, okay? Now, this is different because you're not gonna have that added stress. I mean, what are the drill sergeants gonna be doing when you're trying to do the resupply mission and 
whatever you're supposed to do. Like, I don't know, take MREs to something like it. You're not gonna be doing anything complicated whatsoever the first day of base training. You're, you're just not going to. If they try to do that, it's just gonna be pointless. But the drill sergeants are just gonna be like, standing there watching, talking nicely to people, not yelling at them. Maybe they will be yelling at them, just not super crazy. They're, they're gonna do any kind of smokings if they screw up, if they don't complete the task in time. Like honestly, I don't even, I can't even fathom how this is gonna happen. Not in a shark attack like manner. Like how that will even be helpful whatsoever. Like it's seriously just mind blowing to me that somebody thought this was a good idea. Now again, it would kind of be a little bit different if this was just later on in base training. Maybe they do this like the second day of base training, the third day, first week, whatever. But then the drill sergeant still being all up in your face, chaos, craziness, uh, get this done in the next 20 seconds or else you know everybody's gonna be doing push-ups or whatever. Like, a bunch of chaos, right? That's kind of how it should be done in a sense, that initiation period, that mindset switch, being like, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Just that kind of mental experience in a sense, working together. But when you don't have that chaos from the drill sergeant added, it's probably gonna be easy. It could be hectic. I don't know what specific task for the resupply mission that they're talking about, but I, just, I can't imagine that would be super complicated. I can't imagine drill sergeants doing this, having to, I don't know, like hold people's hands while they're trying to do this. I'm not really sure how that's gonna happen. But ultimately, I don't think that this is gonna be like a suitable replacement for the shark attack. A suitable replacement for the shark attack would be, you know, some events like this, but also with the shark attack environment, with the drill sergeant still yelling at people, creating that chaos, but actually having kind of like some set things to do. The shark attack, as it, used to stand is essentially just you know get off the bus you know you get in formation in your platoon area um, or your company area and the drill sergeant is having people do a whole bunch of crazy stuff physical exercises holding the bags over their head doing air squats um, holding a squat position for a long period of time uh, you know going up to your bay areas not being able to stop moving so having to run in place the whole time and anytime anybody does or says anything incorrectly uh, maybe somebody doesn't know something, or they freeze, whatever, like anything possible could go wrong essentially for a soldier during the shark attack as far as getting smoked for something. But if they had a set structure to that, you know, I mean, they did the same thing essentially every single cycle, but maybe if they had some tasks like they were talking about with this first 100 yards, you know, incorporate both of them together, not separating and removing them. So a super long video, if you made it to the end of this video, let me know down in the comment section. Uh, if you did, let me know also down in the comment section what you guys think about this. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I'm really curious because I've essentially got some emotions into this video because I just, I just don't understand. I do not understand how this happened. So that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. That'd be awesome. If you wanna check out some more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. That would be even better. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat if you haven't already. Hope you guys have an amazing freaking day. And I'll see y'all later. Drop.